Mark Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I want to try speckling it using some kind of shaker again. In general, whether I am speckling yarn using a uh, just straight dry dye powder or powder mis mixed with citric acid. I prefer to use my gloved fingertips because I can pinch a little bit of the dye and then slowly by rubbing my fingers together release one particle at a time to spread out the speckles onto yarn. But in a recent Leave No Dye Behind video, I was trying to apply heavy speckles all over and that got really exhausting for my hand to take a pinch and slowly move it. And so if I'm going for a really heavy speckled look, maybe having some kind of shaker that I can move around and sort of tap the color onto the yarn will go a bit better. Now I have tried using uh, not this kind of salt shaker, but sort of a more typical one like this that I got from Dollar Tree before. Not with acid dyes, but I think with both sugar sprinkles and Kool-Aid. And it works fine. But what I like about these jars that I got from Ikea is that you can seal them. And so that makes me feel more comfortable when it comes to acid dyes because if I have extra to store and save for later. Now, I also have this tea strainer and this sugar dusting wand, which I'm not planning on using today, but I might use again in a later video. I have tried both of these out, I think with Kool-Aid, and the problem that I had with them was that I found that when I was tapping it, like if I tapped it here, I'd get a lot of dye right there, and I found it harder to get light coverage. But if I'm going for heavy coverage, then these tools may work well. So I'm gonna keep these on deck in case I really don't like the effect I have with these jars, but we're gonna set up with two colors and see how it goes. All of the tools and equipment, salt shakers and everything that I'm using in this video are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are not used for the preparation of food. And whenever I am dealing with the dry dye powder, I will be wearing a P100 respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves for uh, my protection. Before I go show you the colors that I've selected for today, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Raylene. Raylene, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and I really hope you're going to enjoy your yarn. And no, unfortunately, even though I am decked out in my pumpkin gear for some pumpkin decorating festivities later, today's colorway is not gonna be Halloween focused. But if you would like to check out some Halloween yarn, go and look at the October 2021 Chemnitz Dye Along live stream where I did create jack-o'-lantern inspired colorways. The two colors I want to use today are True Black and Berry Crush. Uh, and I am very, very excited to do this. The one question that I have left is how much of the powder I want to mix because like a tablespoon of citric acid powder is an easy volume to mix up, but then that ends up a lot of volume, being a lot of volume to add on to yarn. So I'm debating a bit. There are other powders that you can use to dilute your acid dyes. I'm adding, I think, one teaspoon of citric acid powder to each jar. Uh, the one thing I will say is that I have found that using citric acid gives you the sharpest speckles. Using sugar in situations like with Stellina where you don't want uh, to create the too acidic of an environment to dull that Stellina fiber, uh, sugar works well. Salt causes things to spread out more, so I don't recommend using salt. Unless, of course, you want that effect. All right, I now have my mask on. And as for how much of the powders, gosh, I don't really know. I'm gonna take, this is just like a craft tongue depressor stick. I mean, that's not very much. Let's do sort of two blips. Then I'm gonna attempt to stir this up pretty well. And then we'll do the same with the Berry Crush. Whoop, I wanna close this one. I typically try to only have one jar open at a time. We'll do two, 
for a tip folds. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see how I feel about the color distribution. But I have a container here to dip my little sticks into the water, and now I can screw on these lids, and we are ready to start our speckling attempt. Today, we are gonna start dyeing 200 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino, and I have pre-soaked it in plain tap water for about 30 minutes to an hour or so. I have added the 200 grams of yarn into my full-size catering steam pan. There's enough water in here that we might get some spread of our colors, but today we are overall looking at more the application technique versus the final colorway. But my vision is to have some spread to get heavy speckled yarn with a deep uh, base. I added three tablespoons of water to the dye bath and then enough of the pre-soaked liquid so that, you know, we have liquid at the edges when I move the yarn aside. If I wanted less spread, you could have even less water in here, but since we're on top of burners, I've yet to scorch yarn. Uh, I like having a little more water, and as I mentioned, I want and encourage there to be a tiny bit of spread. All right, we are nice and warm. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low, and I'm gonna admit, this feels weird. <laughs> this feels weird, but I just opened up our little jar and the problem is I have no idea how quickly oh dear <laughs> things are gonna come out so over there I did well but over there it kind of just dumped so let's see see here I'm not getting any so what if I like close it and open it Okay, so I'm getting a little better. I will say that this is easier on my wrist, but you can see uh, the coverage. <laughs> you can see it's really just dumping the colors in various sections. Let's try the other color. Now, okay, maybe I'll cover it with my finger to get some dye over there. And then see, I mean, okay, now with the pink, I'm able to like sprinkle it on a little bit better. And I think if I were to dilute, use less dye and have more citric acid, like that might make it a little easier to get it more spread out. Uh, but see, then I run out. It's just not, it's not easy to be very consistent. Uh, it's also pretty hard to get towards the edges. I mean, the colorway is really, really fun. It's really fun, uh, but let me, let me zoom you in. There is no question that we got some great heavy speckles here. Now, granted, we have this whole blob <laughs> that I was not expecting. Uh, but around it, we do have speckles, and a lot of the pink did speckle really well. We're seeing a lot of spread, but that can be more from the amount of liquid I have present front then, and the colors we're using versus being some kind of problem with the application technique. Uh, but I found this container really, really hard to control. And if we look at the shape, I mean, you can see where I went, how, where I was adding the colors was so concentrated. It wasn't spreading them over a wider area. And so when I have my finger, it would be easier for me to come and add some near the edge and to come and add some in these areas that I missed. I found using the shaker to be a lot more awkward. That being said, I think that if you were going to apply speckles to a small area, I certainly would increase the amount of citric acid I had so that way uh, when it came out quickly there would be less dye present. Uh, I think that that's the thing I want to try next with this, to use 
uh, someday once I've used up all the dye I have in there right now, then we can retry this and use a tiny amount of dye. So that way if a lot of powder falls out, we'll only get a few specks. And that might work better than what we have here. Which of course isn't to say that we're not creating a really fun, heavy speckled colorway here. We are. It just, I can tell from this just like one attempt that for me, the control over it isn't my favorite. But I do enjoy the colors and I'm excited to uh, go a bit bigger uh, to flip the yarn, add more color, and really get this heavy speckled appearance on the yarn. And who knows, maybe by the end I'll change my mind because I'll like the results that much more. I think I'm going to just wait five minutes before uh, we flip, but so I'll hop in front of the camera and chat more. Citric acid comes with different sized crystals, so that is something else that could make a difference. And I do have, the citric acid I'm using here today is like a food grade one. I would say that the size of the crystals is similar to that of salt or just table white sugar. Uh, but I think that if I was gonna use some citric acid crystals that were larger, then it would be easier for fewer to fall out at a time and you could get potentially, uh, I guess better distribution coming out of the jars. Uh, the dusting ones I have would probably work really well, but my concern with the whole size there is that the I'm afraid things will sort of continuously fall out because unlike powdered sugar, which sort of sticks to itself until you tap it, uh, I'm afraid that the citric acid would just pour straight on it and sort of dump the dye in a spot like I did at first with the black until I got a good handle on it. Which brings me to another point. I got better as time went on. The first time I tried to add some of the black, it dumped really heavy. So I think just like I figured out over time how much to pinch with my fingers, you could, I could figure out how to do this better as well. Just right now I feel like a puppy trying to walk for the first time. I feel awkward. <laughs> and. I mean, I'm glad I'm trying something new. I'm really glad I'm giving this a shot, especially because this has been uh, requested and suggested. I just know that for me, uh, with my fingers, I have more control. But I have been having issues lately with a repetitive stress injury in my wrist, which then results in some pain in my elbow because I'm favoring the wrist a little bit. And so trying to come up with altern alternative ways to do things that maybe would uh, allow me to remove some pressure from my joints at times is something that I am very interested in exploring. So if you want to see me try uh, those dusting wands in another video, I will give that a shot. I probably will need to keep them in a cup so that way I don't like spread powder all over my kitchen. Or maybe I could try it on a countertop technique and then steam set. That might work as well. Uh, and I am willing to try out using more citric acid and less dye than I added this time in these shakers again in the future. So if you want to see it all or some specific twist, let me know down below. But I'm not going to give up on this yet, even though right now it's not my favorite. Uh, I know we're, I know I'm gonna love the yarn, so really don't, don't worry, I, we're gonna love the yarn. The yarn's gonna be stunning. It's just about how you apply the dye, and you, as you play and try out different techniques, you might decide that you hate a technique that I love, or that you prefer a technique that I don't like as much, and that's okay. And that's one of the reasons why I film myself trying different things, because by trying things, you learn what works best for you. And that's the best way to improve as a dyer is by sometimes going outside of your comfort zone because maybe you'll figure out that, oh, I like that more than I thought. And that's a new favorite thing that I wanna do again and again. So it's worth giving things a shot. But let's go flip our yarn and dye the other side. I am not even checking to see if all the color has absorbed before we flip. There's bound to be some pinks that are gonna spread and some grays that'll spread, which is totally fine with me. Uh, that is something that I envision and kind of want. Uh, I won't mind, I won't be sad at all if we end up with sort of a charcoal grayish pink kind of colorway. I'm very excited to see where this ends up. Okay, let's do this. Let's just sort of 
go. But the problem is it takes a while to start. Ooh, that's working. Oh. Okay, so I'm sort of shaking it. That's helping me get light coverage. Now, I can't really get the edges of the pan really well. And it is a little heavy, but this is working better. I think that I just need to get a feel for it. I mean, I have no idea where the die is landing. Because, uh, <laughs> like, I kind of want more there, but I can't tell where stuff is coming out very well. But application-wise, oh my, have I used most of it? Oh no, there's still some in there. Application-wise, this is a much evener job. Now one problem, let's see, oh, there we go. One problem is that it's hard for me to see where the dye is coming out. And this glass shaker is heavy. I think I might, okay, that time I was, I was, did a better job with the black than the pink this time, uh, this round, but I think that I might like those little shakers I use, I've used in the past with uh, sprinkles a bit better. Although I like these lids. So if you have any recommendations for salt shakers with lids that have a more, that are smaller, um, smaller than those big jars, I'd like to try it. I mean, there's no question we are getting heavy speckles and this is much faster than if I was doing a pinch at a time with my fingertips. So those are good speckles. Those are really good speckles. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is gorgeous yarn, so I think that, yeah, I mean, this might work better. I waited five minutes and then flipped the yarn again to expose areas that needed more color, and then determined to try to use most of the dye that I had collected. I used these shakers to shake our speckles on, and, you know, it's hard because I'm I'm a bit torn. I don't like the lack of control. I don't like that I can't get close to the edges or there's some places where I want more color and I struggle to get the color to come out on the spot where I think I'm trying to shake the powder. But that might not matter much if I'm going for all over heavy speckles on the yarn. It might not matter that I don't have that control um, specifically. And so potentially using this, even if I want speckles not all over the yarn, but in a small area, maybe I will have some amount of control at some point. So, you know, it's, I'm glad I'm giving it another shot today and I'm glad that I'm considering giving it another shot again uh, in the future because I know that I love this yarn I'm creating and I think sometimes you need to embrace a technique and the challenges for what it is. And so given that on the second and third times, I'm getting heavy speckles, I'm not adding it or dumping it too heavy so I get like a big solid splotch. We are getting heavy speckles. So that's having me rethink my other analysis on this because Time-wise, this is quite effective. Okay, we are at my sink to deal with these dye leftovers. Uh, and here is some of the color from the lids, but also some color from the sticks at the beginning. And then I do have a fair amount of pink and black left over from these uh, crystals. And what I'm doing here is rinsing out these jars and diluting all of this excess dye to add on to our yarn. I like where it is now a lot, but I also uh, like the idea of making the speckles pretty subtle. And so I'm very excited to try this out. I really hope I'm not going to regret it, but it's just a nice way to use up the leftover dye. And 
Yeah, I really hope I don't regret it. Because <laughs> this actually looks like not a tiny amount of pigment. I changed my mind. Yeah, I changed my mind. That would be gorgeous here. It would be beautiful on top of this. But I think that, you know, there's probably enough pigment that we may as well just use it for a semi-solid or something. I am going to go ahead and add the rest of the pre-soak water. We did add a lot of acid in here with the citric acid crystals and we are going to heat this uh, for, for 30 minutes. I'll probably move it to the other side of the stove and then we'll come and we'll dye uh, with the rest of that dye that we saved. I'm feeling sparkly today, so let's dye some wool to dye for shimmer fingering. Uh, this yarn is 90% superwash merino, 10% lurex. And the lurex should not dull uh, from exposure to more acid, which we have from that citric acid we mixed in. Uh, this yarn is dry, but I'm going to start off adding uh, to the cool pot just some plain water. Uh, which we can, we're not really pre-soaking, but I can pre-wet this skein. Then I'll add the dye, which does have some acid in there. Uh, we'll add the dye, and I mean, I'll put gloves on. We'll move the yarn around uh, while it's still cold, and then we'll heat things up. Uh, and we may need to add more acid, but probably not, so we'll see. Here we're coming with the dye. I did forget. Yeah, that's a fair amount of color. I'm just rinsing out the jar. I did forget that I technically bought some mini skeins with Stellina for us to see if we can dull it intentionally. But I'm just sort of slowly dipping this in, moving it around. And already, just from the color of the, the yarn is soaking up in the liquid, I'm glad that I decided to not do this on our speckled skein. I think that this would just reduce the brightness that we see. And I think that this purpley color with the silver Lurex is going to be spectacular. So I'm now going to turn on the heat and we will check back in in 20 minutes to see how much color is left. This is a very pretty muted purple color, but I'm definitely glad that I didn't mutify. I think if it was just pink or just black, maybe I would have done it. Ooh, we still have a fair amount of color in here. Let's add some acid. I guess the only citric acid in here was remnant, so like not very much to, okay, that's almost three tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm gonna give this yeah, let's, let's go ahead and go more. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to wait 10 minutes, but let's just do a splash of vinegar. Now we absolutely should have enough that we should see all of the color strike. And as for our speckled yarn, turning off the heat, I'm surprised how much more the pink spread than the black. Uh, but I'm not seeing any color left in the pan, so I'm going to just leave the yarn in here to cool for a bit, uh, and then I'll remove it to cool completely so we can wash it. <laughs> it may have been out of focus for that whole clip, I just realized, but the water is clear, the heat is off, and we will come to check in on our sparkle yarn in 10 minutes. 10 minutes have passed, and you can see our pot is nice and hot. This is a beautiful dusty purple. There is a little bit of pigment left in there, not a ton. You know, this purple would have been pretty over the yarn, but it would have removed the black and pink on our speckles. So I am gonna turn off the heat here, leave the yarn in a bit to cool, suck up some residual color, and then once all the yarn has cooled off, we can go wash it. Let's wash all of our yarn and see how we are doing. Man, I really like the way that the purple and black combine to be this sort of dusty mauve color. Now, there is a chance 
that we might see some bleeding when we add just a bit of some dish soap to our yarn. Sometimes black bleeds like a tiny bit for a rinse, uh, but I'm not really expecting much. Pinks can bleed, blues can bleed, not the colors can bleed, but I'm not seeing any color bleeding and we have a fair amount of soap in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out the soap. Then I'm gonna put this yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a look at the finished yarn. I have been all over the map with how I feel about this technique today. What has not changed is I absolutely love the yarn. The pink spread more than the black, but we have super heavy speckles in both that pink, what was it, Plum Dandy, and our True Black all over the yarn. And it worked so, so well. And I'm very, very happy for that. In fact, there are only a couple of areas, even where things were really, really heavily added, uh, there's only a handful of areas where I feel, okay, I see like a quote splotch versus just super, super dense speckles. So I think that if I were to get containers that fit my hand better, I may as well zoom in while I chat. If I were to say save uh, spice jars and get something that's a little bit lighter on the hand and so therefore a little less awkward to shake, if I were to practice with this more, this is a better way to get heavy speckles, especially if you want heavy dense speckles on a small patch of yarn. Uh, with practice, I think I could get better at it. And it could say be easier to store uh, some acid dyes mixed with citric acid powder if you want to use it at a later date and be a, I guess, work better that way for more batches. I think especially if I were to mix, say, like a quarter cup of citric acid with dye, you know, get a larger quantity so I'm not dealing with too much, too little, too much, too little. Having that almost empty jar almost did me a disservice in just really sh preventing me from getting used to using it. Certainly this technique would not work anytime I wanted the speckles to be really lightly distributed or I wanted really firm control. But for times when I have leftovers and I want to just go really heavy and speckle, this is faster than doing it by hand when I'm only pinching a little bit at a time. And it's enabled me to distribute some of the dye a little more spread out than with my pinched fingertips when I'm trying to just go faster and heavier. Uh, so there are advantages and disadvantages, but ultimately with any type of dyeing technique, it comes down to your personal preference. And I believe I've already said it in this video, but there may be techniques and ways of doing those techniques that I prefer that you might not enjoy doing yourself and vice versa. And that is okay. That's part of coming in and playing and figuring out who you are as a dyer and what your vision and your take on adding color to yarn is. And I highly recommend with playing around with a lot of techniques because you never know uh, what you'll find out that you really love until you try it. Raylene, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. I really love this colorway, even though I have my reservations about the technique. Uh, and I really, really hope you're going to enjoy this yarn. If any of you watching from home would like to learn how you can become a lab partner, get yarn dyed in a Chemnitz video and shout outs in the video, go and check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And if it is sold out, I do have a waiting list to notify uh, when I restock. So feel free to send me a message on Etsy. Uh, the, the listing will be linked down in the video description. Finally, we have this lovely dusty purple. Uh, from the leftover dye and I almost put this dye on top of that pink speckled yarn and I am so so glad I didn't. I love the bright pink with pops of black and while the colorway still would have been beautiful with this purple over it, I think that I might have been a little disappointed and so sometimes even though you want to use up all the dye, it's okay to hold it back for another project if you love where you are already. 
And I'm not sure how easy it is for you to see in this light how sparkly uh, the Lurex still is. Uh, I film with light that is uh, pretty diffused, so it's a little harder to see some of the sparkles. Uh, but it is shiny and delightful. The contrast between the silver Lurex and our beautiful dusty purple base almost uh, disguises the beautiful variation that we have within the purples. It is very subtle but still present and I think would add depth to any project. Now this Lorex base is super super fun. I found I don't like this base with tiny speckles because there's already this contrast, this marled feel from the Lurex, and so sometimes speckles get a little bit lost, uh, and the silver really dominates uh, some of the color. So it's fun to play with, when you use it for a variegated yarn, to play with larger color sections and repeats to really uh, allow that Lurex to have its moment. But the subtle colorway is gorgeous too. Raylene, I'd like to thank you one more time for being my lab partner. And to all of you, thank you so much for watching this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I post new videos at least twice a week, and then we have live streams and unboxings and dialogues, so please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemdits Tutorials YouTube channel. And stay tuned, because there's so many other pretty colorways coming up here on the channel, and you don't want to miss any of it. Once again, thank you so much for watching.